Hi everyone, welcome to the third and final part in the series on the determining reaction stoichiometry lab. This video will discuss the experimental procedure, data analysis, safety, and waste disposal for the lab. First off, you're going to start by having one student in your group check out a five milliliter graduated pipette, a pipette pump, and two cuvettes from the stockroom. If you have a spec 20 on your bench, plug it in and turn it on by turning the knob that's marked right here all the way to its maximum setting. Note that this knob controls the intensity of the incoming light, so make sure it's set at the highest level possible. Then, use two small beakers to get approximately 30 milliliters of each of the iron 3 nitrate and phenanthrolene solutions. Don't get much more than 30 milliliter, as you'll only need that much for your experiment. And then get 11 test tubes. They can be small or medium size. Clean them with soap, rinse the soap well with water, and then dry all the test tubes. Label the test tubes from one to 11. Once you have the pipette, rinse it with water by pipetting deionized water and then discarding the water into the sink. Do this twice. Pipette the correct volume of iron solution into each of the tube as given in the table in your lab procedure, which is also shown here. When you're done with all the 11 test tubes, Rinse the inside of your pipette with deionized water three times, then use the pipette to transfer the correct volume of phenanthrolene into the 11 test tubes, which is also shown here and in your lab procedure. And then at the end, you wanna cover the test tube with a small piece of paraffin film, which is shown here, or a test tube stopper, and then mix the solution gently by inverting the test tube twice. At this point, some of the solutions will be light red and some will be darker red. This is because the iron phenanthrolene complex ion has been produced. Now, before we can measure the absorbance of the complex ion in test tubes 1 through 11, we must first determine the lambda max, which is the wavelength at which to measure this absorbance in. To find the lambda max, we have to scan a range of wavelength in the blue-green region as described in video 2. So first, you want to get two cuvettes, Rinse them well with water and then dry them completely with Kim wipe, which is shown here. Don't use regular paper towel as that can scratch the surface of the cuvette causing measurement errors. The cuvette has a circle and a line on it to help you differentiate it from the regular test tube. To one of the cuvettes, you're going to add phenanthrolene until it's about halfway full, corresponding to the red mark shown here. To the other cuvette, you're going to add the solution from test tube number five, which you made earlier, also until the cuvette is about halfway full. Take these two cuvettes to an available spec 20. You will now perform a scan to find your lambda max. Basically, what you're doing is creating one of the plots that looks like this, except that you're going to do it manually. You're going to measure the absorbance of solution number five at one of the wavelengths and then you're going to move on to another wavelength and another wavelength and so on until you find the wavelength that gives you the maximum absorbance. All right, going back to the procedure, let me first describe the different controls in the SPEC 20. You have the mode button, which is located here, the sample compartment, the wavelength knob, the power knob, the zero knob, and a lever at the bottom left. So what you wanna do first is press that mode button so that the light here changes to the line that's marked absorbance. And then you wanna switch the lever at the bottom left so that it's in the wavelength between 340 and 599 nanometers. Next, you're going to take the cuvette that has phenanthrolene in it and put it inside the sample compartment and then close the cover. Adjust the wavelength using this knob until it reads 460 here. Then you're going to adjust the zero knob until the absorbance reads 0 0.000. Now you may need to turn this knob clockwise or counterclockwise for a bit before you're going to see 0 0.000 absorbance. The process that you're doing here is called blanking the spec. This is analogous to tearing a balance to set it to zero. In other words, we're calibrating the spec. Once the absorbance reads 0 0.000, take out the cuvette containing the blank, and then place the cuvette containing solution number five inside the sample compartment and then close the cover. Read the value of the absorbance that you have for solution number five, and then record that in your lab report at the space that's indicated right here. You're now going to repeat steps 4C to 4G, but at wavelength 470 nanometers. 
For every wavelength, you must blank the spec before measuring the absorbance of solution number five. You're going to repeat these steps again until you have scanned all the way to 550 nanometers. Look through all the absorbance values you have and then find the highest value and then write the wavelength that gives you the highest value of absorbance here. That's your lambda max. Now that you've determined your lambda max, you're going to pour solution number five back into its original test tube and then rinse the cuvette that has solution number five in it earlier and dry it well with a Kim wipe. Now you're ready to measure the absorbance of all the solutions in test tubes one through 11. So bring all the test tubes to the spec, set the wavelength on the spec to the value of your lambda max, and then put the cuvette containing the blank solution in the spec and then turn the zero knob until it reads 0 0.000 again. So you need to blank the spec at the beginning. Take the cuvette out, and then now what you're going to do is add solution number one to the clean cuvette, and then place that cuvette with the solution number one inside the sample compartment and then close the cover. Read the absorbance value and record it here. Pour solution number one out of the cuvette back into its original test tube, Make sure all the solution is emptied out from the cuvette. You don't want to leave anything in there because that will dilute the next solution. And then you're going to pour solution number two into the cuvette. You're going to place the cuvette with solution number two into the sample compartment, read the absorbance again, and then record it now in the next space. Note that you don't need to blank the spec every time when you're doing this part of the experiment. This is because all the measurements are done at that same wavelength, which is your lambda max. Repeat the absorbance measurements with all the solutions from one through 11. Lastly, you wanna to go to the reagent bottles and then record the value of the molarities for each of the solutions that you use in this space right here. Check your data with your instructor first before you clean up to make sure that it's reasonable. Your instructor may ask you to repeat or redo some of the measurements if the value is incorrect. All right, let's discuss the safety and cleanup of the experiment. You must have your standard PPE throughout the experiment as well as gloves, in this case, to handle the reagents. After your instructor approves your data, you can then take all the solutions you have and discard them into the waste container, which looks like this, and it's located in one of the fume hoods. You're gonna clean your test tube with soap and rinse it well with water. Take off the tape that you put on it earlier. Dry them well before putting them back inside the locker. If you leave any water in the test tubes, it can drip and damage the wood. You're also going to rinse the pipettes and cuvettes well with water and then dry them before returning them back to the stock room. Wipe your bench and sink area clean with paper towel. Discard your gloves into the dirty glove compartment, which looks like this and it's located near the entrance to the lab. I wanna end this video by briefly discussing the data analysis. You'll have to first plot the data to determine the volumes of iron and phenanthrolene that produce the highest concentration of complex ion. Once you obtain these values, you'll have to reduce them to small whole numbers. In this experiment, the coefficient of iron is always one. So it's the coefficient of phenanthrolene that we're trying to find. If you find that the phenanthrolene coefficient doesn't reduce to a whole number, all you need to do is round the number to the nearest whole number. So here's an example. Let's say you find from your plot that 3.15 milliliters of phenanthrolene gives the most product. Since the total volume is five, that means 1.85 milliliters of iron is needed in the reaction. Now, if you reduce this ratio to a small whole number, what you'll get is one to 1.703. Now, instead of trying to find a multiplier that would convert 1.7 to a whole number, all you have to do is just round 1.7 to the nearest whole number, which is two. This is because the uncertainty in this experiment doesn't justify highly precise calculations to be used in finding the coefficient. Okay, that's the end of this series of videos. We've covered lots of content, so please rewatch some of the videos uh, from the earlier parts if you're having difficulty understanding the whole idea. I'm gonna see you in lab.